Hello again everyone, this is Rudolph Wilkins of Forgotten Fitness and today I will be talking about the Iron Boots, the most amazing forgotten exercise tool. Now I am really excited to talk about these. I first acquired my pair of Iron Boots, my original pair, back in 2019 right when quarantine started and man I have not looked back. They have been so fun to use, um, they're very difficult, very challenging, and they never really get comfortable. You know, some exercises you do, they get very comfortable, almost boring. You know, they become static in nature. But the Iron Boots, because there's so much variety, over 30 different exercises you can do with them, it never gets stale. There's always something else to try. And a lot of you older guys might know about these a lot because they were ubiquitous when it came to the barbell sets that were sold between the 1920s to the 1970s. They pretty much came in all of the sets. Many different bodybuilders used them, and they were common even in health clinics throughout the United States from that amount of time as well. You could find them in pretty much every gym across the country. Before you had leg press machines, leg extension, and leg curl machines, you had the iron boots. They were just quintessential. If you wanted to train your legs and you didn't want to squat, you used the iron boots. But nowadays they have been severely forgotten to the point where you never hear about them anymore. There are very few videos online. Golden Era Bookworm has made a few, but, but they are very limited. Not much information on them at all. And the amazing thing is they're still fairly affordable and uh, fairly easy to acquire, at least here in the United States. And I'm going to give you a little bit of a background in this video, uh, a description, a history of the iron boots, who used them. And I'll also give you three exercises that you can do if you happen to own a pair of iron boots or if you happen to acquire them, which I would highly recommend all of you go out and hunt down a pair and buy them. I actually have two pair, uh, two pairs. One of them, like I said, I bought in 2019 and another pair I bought very recently that actually has the original straps, which I'll get to a lot of the time you won't find them with original straps, but there's ways uh, you can work around that. But if you have any questions about this exercise implement, uh, any future video ideas, or anything about the channel in general, do let me know in the comment section below. But I hope you all enjoyed this video. Before I actually show you the exercises, let me go through the history of the iron boots. So the iron boots are known by many different names. They are called the iron boots, also known as the health shoes or the iron shoes. And these are all brandings. They're different brandings for the same implement, the same tool. What an iron boot is across the board is a large cast iron shoe, which attaches to your foot via a leather strap. And it was recommended by most companies that you actually wear shoes. So a lot of the times these guys would work out in or barefoot they would squat barefoot do all their exercises barefoot it was very common and in fact a lot of people recommend nowadays that barefoot working out barefoot is actually preferred uh, it helps you on a lot of different lifts and gets you better stimulus in the muscles but when it came to using the iron boots it was always recommended to wear shoes flat shoes because if you didn't of course the metal would dig into your feet and the straps as well and the straps normally had metal clips which could cut your feet so it was always recommended to wear some kind of flat shoes. I prefer to wear Converse or wrestling shoes. They're typically very flat, uh, but that's just a footnote. Also, uh, they typically included a short barbell or dumbbell handle that would be provided to thread or fit through the center of the boots themselves to add additional weight. So the, the boots typically only weighed about five pounds unloaded at least that's the York variety, which both my pairs are the York health shoes that were made in the 1950s. And they're about five pounds, but you can actually stick this bar through. The bars each weigh about five pounds as well. And then you could just add collars to that, or you can even add more plates. So it's essentially limitless. You can add as many plates as you need. Progressive overload is completely possible here. And essentially, because the weights are out on the ends of your feet, there is a ton of leverage. So for most lifts, you really don't need that much weight. I'm sure a lot of you older guys can attest that sometimes for a lot of these lifts, the boots themselves are enough. High profile trainers and promoters such as Bob Hoffman and Joe Weider swore by these. Uh, even athletes up to Frank Zane used them. It, it, they were just 
ubiquitous. All bodybuilders, strength athletes, Olympic lifters loved the iron boots. They had their purpose. They could regularly be found in various barbell sets uh, sold by Weeder, York, Healthline. All of the companies that existed during the silver era of bodybuilding sold a pair of health shoes. And they typically were not sold by themselves. I think you could purchase them uh, through select orders, uh, through money orders. You could purchase a pair of uh, iron boots by themselves. But most typically they came in these in these Big 12, Big 10 specials. And then, of course, Weeder had their equivalents to this. So they came in large sets and they would be, would be accompanied by uh, bar, barbells and dumbbell handles. It was considered a very versatile piece of equipment because it could help train your abs, of course, the muscles in the leg, including the quads, hamstrings, and calves. And there were even other uh, muscle groups that could work as well. You could even affix uh, the different attachments that came in the kit, such as even the kettlebell handles to them to do various exercises. Just really a utilitarian tool. It was a Swiss army knife ex uh, exercise implement, in fact. Athletes such as Sigmund Klein, Alan Steffen, and John Grimmick all used this tool to develop their legs. There's some wonderful photos in Strength and Health magazine of John Grimmick doing uh, essentially leg presses, what we would call leg presses with iron boots, and he has just a ton of weight strapped to them, and you can see his the muscles in his legs just bulging. So they definitely worked, and again, progressive overload is alive and well here, which is a good thing. It's not just like you're getting the shoe. You, you can definitely add more weight. You can stick the small barbell through the center and add as much weight as you need, but I can guarantee for most people it won't be that much. Over 30 different exercises can be performed with this tool. I mean, that's immense. When you think about what you can do with a leg extension machine at the gym, uh, you got one exercise, and that's leg extensions. But here, you can train your abdominals with different kinds of crunches, uh, uh, various different kind of leg raises. You can do uh, essentially leg press to work your, your legs. You can do leg extensions and leg curls with the iron boots themselves. It's just amazing. But sadly, iron boots have been completely replaced by the various leg and ab machines available at the gym. Um, why I think it's possibly ease of use, although I think uh, health shoes, iron boots are very easy to use. You literally just strap them to your feet and do what you need to do. Uh, portability, affordability, small size, and ease of use are all reasons I would recommend purchasing a pair of iron boots. Uh, definitely over something like a big uh, leg extension machine that takes up a lot of room and you can only do one exercise on. It just doesn't seem like a friendly thing to do, especially if you're limited on space and have a home gym. Uh, secondhand sites like eBay are perfect to find the uh, iron boots available. Uh, of course, York Health Shoes are my favorite. I love York. I love everything they made. They were such high quality. But Weeder had their own variety, and they all do the same thing. So if you can find a pair, I would definitely go out and purchase them. Now in the photos here, you can see if you look uh, on the bottom, you can see two different pairs. Now the pair on the right is actually one of my pairs, and the pair on the left is a pair I got from the internet with the straps uh, there. And those straps are typically, if you find the boots, most of the time you'll find them with no straps at all. If you do find them with straps, they're typically very fragile and they're prone to falling apart. I would recommend removing them altogether. Now, normally that doesn't mean you'll have to actually cut them. You should be able to uh, feed it through the actual metal clip and then pull it out and replace it with toe straps. Now, these blue straps you can see on the photo on the right are toe straps, what you would use on a truck or, or any kind of vehicle like that to, to keep down things in a bed of a truck. And uh, these toe straps are available pretty much any hardware store uh, in Walmart in the United States, uh, any equivalent across the, uh, um, across the various uh, countries of the world, I'm sure, have them as well. They're very inexpensive. I mean, this pair here I may maybe spent $8 for. And I like them a lot because they're quick adjustable. So you can just pull the straps and it'll self-tighten. And there's a little clip on the back to loosen it. 
I prefer that to like a leather belt, which is another way you can replace these straps as well. I've seen on various forums that people will replace them with leather straps. I personally don't like that and I don't do that. Um, so I would recommend using these toe straps. But in the next slides, uh, in the next few slides, I'm gonna give you three exercises you can do with iron boots and uh, you can see how they work. And I hope you enjoy. Now the first exercise I'll be showing you today is honestly one of my favorite abdominal exercises to do, period. And that is leg raises. I pretty much finish all of my workouts with a couple sets of leg raises, no matter what I'm training that day. It's just a good finisher for me. And it gives me a really good, uh, nice burn throughout the entire abdominals. And I like to do these very long uh, range of motion, trying to keep my legs as straight as possible and almost bringing my feet over my head. And once they get there, I'll go back down and really work on keeping my feet straight. Now it's difficult, especially with five pounds strapped to each of your feet. Um, and, and you're not trying to clang them together. You're trying to keep that little bit of space and bring them over your head. But it is a wonderful burn. And this just takes standard uh, leg raises to the next level. And it makes them that much more difficult and honestly that much more enjoyable and fun to do. So this is a really good exercise and I would highly recommend it. And with iron boots, it just makes it that much better. Exercise number two was actually a favorite of John Grimmick. You see him doing this in a lot of the different magazines and Frank Zane actually did it as well. And it was supposed to be a nice exercise to actually shape the legs and get a nice shape and deep cuts in the quads in particular. Now this is the vertical bicycle kick. So it's a lot like standard bicycle kicks, except you're actually holding and supporting your hips with your hands and your elbows are placed on the ground and you're in this kind of vertical position. And this is really difficult. The, the first part that's difficult is having to actually balance your body in this position, especially if you're tall like me. And the second part is actually like bringing your legs down in this kind of smooth motion. Now I'm definitely not doing it perfect, but uh, I'm working on it. And it is a wonderful exercise. Again, a nice strong burn. And this is one of those exercises where uh, you can do a timer instead of reps. So you could do this for 30 seconds, 45 seconds and really uh, aim for that burn, work on that burn in the muscle. And this would be a wonderful finisher to any leg day. It's a really great exercise and I would highly recommend it. The final exercise brings me to my last point. Now this exercise is the standing hamstring curl. Not that uh, unusual in fact, and very similar to this hamstring curl you can do at most modern gyms today except instead of a machine, using any kind of machine, you're using the iron boot strap to your foot and it works the exact same way. You're bringing your foot up and down. You're bringing it, and, and what I like to do is I'll actually keep my foot back so that it's actually touching a little behind my other foot. And I do this so that it keeps constant tension on the muscle and uh, I'll always feel that my, my hamstring is actually flexing all the time. And so that's how I prefer to do it. And it kind of mimics the formula at the gym. If you're doing it on a hamstring machine, it'll kind of hold your leg in this position anyways. So it's just really wonderful. And on the same token, uh, extensions, uh, quad extensions, are totally possible with this uh, implement as well. You'll just simply be seated on a bench and you can do your quad extensions all day.